Tonight at five, midterm elections are just a few days away. One candidate says he wants to change how Wisconsin elections are run. Political reporter Will Keneally explains. Plus, do you know how you're getting to the polls on election day? We'll share how you can hitch a ride. And it's a crime plaguing drivers across the country. Catalytic converter thefts, the latest in a nationwide bust by federal investigators. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Well, so far this week, we have had absolutely beautiful weather, but that is all going to change over the next few days. It was nice while it lasted. There are a few alert days that we want to tell you about. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti joins us with the very latest. Gary? Well, right now, those winds are blowing, but they're from the south, and it is unseasonably mild. As we take a look at visible cloud track, we can see we had sunshine for at least the first part of the day. Clouds are starting to come in from the west, but right now, there's no rain that's imminent. We will see some showers and thunderstorms start to develop out to the west later tonight, and they will be pretty widespread at this time tomorrow, so big change there. High temperatures today, 71 Madison, 73 Janesville, 76 in Lone Rock, even La Crosse is at 69, Milwaukee at 72. Current temperatures are still right around 70, Madison right at 70, uh, 72 in Bosque Bell, 71 in Prairie du Chien, and across Dane County, 70 in the town of Perry, 71 in Cross Plains, or in uh, Mount Horeb, and 71 degrees in Sun Prairie, but alert days in the forecast cast for tomorrow for showers and thunderstorms it'll bring locally heavy rain through much of southern Wisconsin two inches or more in many spots especially from Madison on toward the west and then Saturday after a cold front sweeps through the rain threat goes down but the winds pick up we could see winds of 45 to 50 miles per hour or greater especially from Madison on toward the east so again a very windy day on Saturday alert days in the forecast for tomorrow and for Saturday for tonight though just skies mostly cloudy temperatures dropping to a very mild 65 by 10 p.m. but the changes start occurring occurring by early tomorrow morning. I'll have more on the timing and the amounts of rain that we can expect in just a few minutes. Gary, thank you. We are just a few days out now from the November election, but one of the candidates wants to change how elections are run in the state. While taking questions at a campaign stop in Middleton this afternoon, Republican candidate Tim Michaels said he wants to make wholesale changes. Political reporter Will Keneally is here to tell us Michael's plan. Will? So we've heard Republicans say that they want to get rid of the Wisconsin Elections Commission. And today we heard what Tim Michaels wants to replace the agency with. Michaels wants to see a board made up of eight members from the state's congressional district. That would be a big change from the current bipartisan commission. Republicans control most of the state's congressional districts. Michaels has not said who would appoint the members to the board, though. So if Michaels wins Tuesday, he would also have a Republican-controlled legislature to work with. And he laid out some of the priorities he'd want to see as well. We're going to stop the out-of-state billionaires from coming in, the Zucker Bucks. We're going to stop the unattended ballot boxes in the middle of the park, the ballot harvest and the ballot harvesting. We're going to stop the indefinitely confined status. I take this issue very seriously because I took that oath of office. I swear to uphold and defend the Constitution. So these are a couple of the friction points for Republicans from previous elections. The indefinitely confined status was used throughout the pandemic, and a Mark Zuckerberg-backed nonprofit provided funds to more than 200 Wisconsin municipalities to help run their elections. For his part, Michael says that he will accept the results of November's election, but this also comes the same week that he said during a campaign stop that if he is elected governor, that Republicans will never lose another election. Well, thank you. A top elections official in Milwaukee is now out of a job after she fraudulently requested military absentee ballots. Kimberly Zapata was the city's deputy director of the election commission. After requesting the ballots through the Wisconsin election website, she sent them to a state representative. She said she did it to expose vulnerability in election laws. Milwaukee's mayor fired Zapata this morning calling her actions an egregious violation of trust. An investigation is underway. The Milwaukee District Attorney expects to file charges against Zapata in the coming days. You've likely made up your mind who you'll vote for, but have you figured out how you'll do it? Well, for some, it's not so easy to actually make it to the voting booth. Catherine Merck shows us some free options available. One factor that can keep people from casting their ballot is just making sure they're actually able to get there. According to the Wisconsin Department of Transportation, 31% of Wisconsinites are non-drivers. Groups like Disability Rights Wisconsin are letting people know that there are resources to get a free ride and make a vote. The organization says just being able to get there is the first step toward making your voice heard. It's very um, disturbing 
when someone is not able to participate in our democracy and exercise that basic civil right because they can't get accessible transportation. For a full list of resources on where you can get a ride to the polls this election day, visit our website at channel3000.com. Reporting in Madison, I'm Catherine Merck with News 3 Now. The final push to rally support from voters is underway. With only five days left before the midterms, big names from both parties are hitting the campaign trail. That includes former President Barack Obama speaking in Arizona on Tuesday and former President Donald Trump campaigning in Iowa tonight. Former Vice President Mike Pence and former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton are also hitting the campaign trail. And President Biden is showing support for New Mexico Mexico Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham. The latest polling of likely voters shows the number one issue for Republicans is the economy. For Democrats, it is the economy and abortion. Parts of the Beltline were shut down for hours today after a driver crashed into a squad car. Now, according to an incident report, the driver was fleeing a traffic stop initiated by another department. Two Madison officers were hurt in the crash but are expected to be okay. The driver was later taken into custody. It's unclear what tentative charges that person is now facing. We now know the name of the man who died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound after a multi-county police chase. Investigators say 19-year-old Samuel Santiago of Milwaukee was involved in an incident in Dubuque on October 22nd. It's unclear what happened in that incident. The suspect eventually drove to Wisconsin, led police on a chase through Grant, Lafayette, and Greene counties. A Lafayette County deputy used a spike strip to try to stop the teen and then fired their gun. It's unclear if the teen was struck. After his vehicle crashed in Greene County, the teen ran off. Authorities reportedly heard a gunshot, later found the suspect dead. A gun was recovered at the scene. Autopsy results show the teen's wounds were self-inflicted. Madison police are asking for your help in finding a person they say scammed an elderly couple out of several thousand dollars. The couple told investigators on Monday they received a call claiming that their daughter was in jail and they needed to bail her out. The suspect later showed up up at their home on Irvington Way to collect the money. After the in-person visit, the couple realized it was a scam and called police. Today, investigators released this photo of the suspect. The person was wearing a black baseball cap, jeans, and a black long-sleeved shirt and appears to have a bat or a Batman logo tattooed on the back of their neck. If you see this person, call police at the number on your screen. The the family of Gabby Petito is formally filing a lawsuit against police in Utah over a traffic stop they say was mishandled. They believe the officers could have prevented Gabby's death. The lawsuit filed against the Moab City Police Department seeks $50 million in damages. Two officers responded to an altercation between Petito and her fiance Brian Laundrie in August of last year. A witness reported seeing Laundrie hit Petito. Officers did not arrest Laundry, but separated the two for the night. Petito soon after went missing and her body was found in Grand Teton National Park. Laundry died by suicide and admitted to killing Petito in a note. Federal authorities have taken down a crime ring that stole thousands of catalytic converters. Michael George tells us the thieves made millions in stolen parts. Federal agents swooped into this New Jersey mansion, part of a coordinated nationwide takedown of a crime ring trafficking in stolen catalytic converters. <coughs> the Justice Department says 21 people were arrested in five states for their roles in the conspiracy, including 13 in Oklahoma. I see uh, huge trucks, guys with you know, assault rifles or you know, guns drawn and shields and apprehending some guys and so after that, it's just, uh, it's been nonstop police presence. It can take less than a minute for thieves to slide under a vehicle and steal its catalytic converter. The devices are part of the exhaust system, converting toxic gas into safer emissions. They also contain precious metals, and the price on the black market can top $1,000 each. The FBI says the stolen converters were shipped to a New Jersey company, which extracted the metals and sold them to a refinery, cashing in for more than $540. $5 million. Brandon Hector Marcos. Ramos works near that New Jersey shop and saw the flow of deliveries. Box trucks coming in and out, and that's it. 
With the price of metals on the rise, thefts have exploded, soaring more than 1,200% since the pandemic. More than a third happened in California, where in 2021, about 1,600 converters were reported stolen each month. Hey, yo! Earlier this year, David Summer caught two thieves in the act at his Los Angeles home. My security camera alerted me that someone was out front. The FBI hopes this week's arrests will put the brakes on future thefts, saying too many innocent car owners have paid the price. Michael George, CBS News, New York. A local veteran who served in World War II and made it all the way to 100 years old was laid to rest today. Marjorie Z. Marshman of Madison passed away on Thursday, October 13th at the VA hospital. You may recall Marjorie from September when we joined Governor Tony Evers in wishing her a happy 100th birthday. She joined the Marines on February 13th, 1943 and was discharged in February of 1946 when she moved to Madison. Coming up, Gary has the latest on some upcoming alert days. Plus, for many, TikTok is more than just a social media app. For many are pushing for it to be banned. We'll tell you why after the break. Then later, Habitat for Humanity celebrates the progress it has made in addressing the growing housing gap. We'll have that story and more coming up tonight at 6. The market's again down today. The Dow falls 146 and a half points. NASDAQ falls almost 182. The S&P loses almost 40. We'll be right back. Black November starts now at Ashley. For a limited time, save 55% on Beautyrest Select Hybrid Mattresses and receive a comforter, two pillows, and a four-piece sheet set for free. And get 60 months special financing with no money down. Happening now, only at Ashley. There will always be bumps in the road, but we got guts, America. We got freedom. We got power. We got future. So let's drive on and make the future we want to see together. Because your new Ford vehicle is just the start of a journey. So stop by your Ford dealer today and claim one of the thousands of new Ford trucks and SUVs on their way. We've been building this country for 119 years, but we're just getting started. Breaking news in Dallas, Texas, where at least five police officers were killed when they were ambushed. This was the deadliest day for U.S. law enforcement since 9-11. Just days after this horrific crime, Mandela Barnes appeared on Vladimir Putin's propaganda news outlet and rationalized violence against American police officers. Police officers are over-exercising their badges. This probably was a retaliatory attack. Do you want Mandela Barnes representing you in the Senate? I'm Ron Johnson, and I approve this message. If you overdraw your account, Wells Fargo gives you an extra day grace period to avoid the overdraft fee. What if everything came with a grace period? Like accidentally parking where you shouldn't. Hey, what about this one? No, nah, that one gets an extra day. Somebody got lucky. Like having an extra day grace period? When it comes to overdrafts, you can with Wells Fargo. Leaves give way to snow. Midwestern winters bring rough weather and high energy bills. Feltco's here to help with our biggest sale of the season. 50% off windows. No money down and no interest until 2024. Winter's right around the corner and the clock is ticking. 50% off windows and soon. Call now. For quality windows, siding and doors, call 866 for Feltco. Black November starts now at Ashley. For a limited time, take a bonus 20% off your purchase of $19.99 or more at checkout. Plus, get 60 months special financing, no minimum, and no money down. Happening now only at Ashley. Getting to the polls can be tough, especially if you don't have a car. Catherine Merck shares our resources and solutions for those still hoping to cast their vote next Tuesday. That's coming up tonight on News 3 Now at 6. We wanted to create an inclusive environment. Bringing together families and kids with special needs at a special place where they can play and be themselves. Charlotte Deleste takes you inside Madison's new Keep Calm Sensory Zone, Monday at 10. You're watching News 3 Now at 5.
Today, Pfizer and its German partner, BioNTech, announced that the first participant has received a dose of a combination COVID and flu vaccine. That shot contains Pfizer's updated bivalent COVID booster and its in investigational flu vaccine. The bivalent booster targets the original COVID strain and two Omicron subvariants. Moderna is also developing a combined flu and COVID vaccine and another combination vaccine that targets flu, COVID, and RSV. The CDC has new guidelines for doctors who prescribe opioids. They focus on the use of prescribed opioids to treat short-term and long-term pain. New recommendations include advising clinicians against abruptly discontinuing opioid prescriptions or rapidly reducing a patient's doses. They also recommend clinicians consider other therapies for common types of acute pain or prescribe immediate release medicines instead. Clinicians are also advised to review patient history of controlled substance when initially prescribing opioids. Pressure is mounting for the U.S. to ban the social media app TikTok over concerns the Chinese government could have access to private data from users in the U.S., especially since today TikTok made clear that European data can be accessed by China-based employees. Mike Valerio has more. For Lucy Pro, TikTok is more than a social media app. She calls it her side hustle, a source of income. As a user, a TikTok user myself, I would just think that, you know, it would be a little, a little bummed out just for the fact because it would be taking away one of my tools that I use to promote my online business that I use on a daily basis. Yet a growing number of U.S. lawmakers worry about the company's handling of sensitive user data. After months of negotiations to resolve concerns that Chinese government authorities could seek to gain access to the data TikTok holds on U.S. citizens, one of the five commissioners of the FCC, Brendan Carr, says the U.S. government should ban the video sharing app rather than come to an agreement. This cybersecurity expert says private data for TikTok users is as compromised as it is with other social media platforms. We don't see any particular evidence that TikTok is necessarily any more harmful or, or dangerous, let's say, from our data perspective than any other social media. Commissioner Carr admits the capacity of the FCC is limited to ban TikTok. It's the Commerce Department or the Federal Trade Commission that have the handle on regulations. With the millions of users in the middle of this, the advice is a proactive approach when it comes to protecting private information. We have to exercise caution because ultimately their service can be hacked. It doesn't matter whether they're based in the United States or in China or, or in Germany, right? In response to calls to ban the app, TikTok said in a statement, we are confident that we are on a path to reaching an agreement with the U.S. government that will satisfy all reasonable national security concerns. Let's get a closer look at some upcoming alert days. Some big changes are on the way. Gary? Well, we were watching the potential for heavy rainfall tomorrow and high winds on Saturday. Alert days are in the forecast for both. Uh, showers and thunderstorms overspread all of southern Wisconsin tomorrow morning, continue through tomorrow afternoon into at least the first half of tomorrow night. Any of the thunderstorms could produce heavy rainfall. And we could be looking at general rainfalls of around two inches or more across much of southern Wisconsin with some higher amounts, especially for areas from Madison on toward the west. And then on Saturday, as a cold front comes through early in the morning, that should end the heavy rain threat. But then the winds will pick up. We could be looking at wind gusts of 45 to 50 miles per hour or greater. The highest uh, probabilities of that happening will be from Madison on toward the east. But all of southern Wisconsin could see winds at least up to about 40 to 45 miles per hour. So an alert day in the forecast for Saturday. On Doppler track right now, Wisconsin free of precipitation. There's a couple of showers up in Lake Superior. Some light snow over parts of the Dakotas. We'll go to the south and you can see the southern edge of the system starting to see rain develop here. But we're going to watch severe weather break out across parts of Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. This is the uh, severe weather outlook for tonight. A slight risk and a marginal risk of severe thunderstorms as far north as southwestern Iowa. Now, this is all taking place because we have a very strong jet stream dividing much colder air to the north and west to the unseasonably mild weather that we've had over the last couple of days to the south and east. Whenever you start to see those big temperature changes, you know the atmosphere is primed for something to happen. And that will start to develop to our south and west. What's going to happen first, we've got a low pressure system to our northwest, a cold front that extends to the low pressure system in, in Colorado. That'll be the weather maker for Saturday morning. But in the short term, winds are out of the south, and that's keeping our temperatures unseasonably mild, still 70. 
70 in Madison, but behind the front, temperatures lower 40s and upper 30s. And on future track, notice by tomorrow afternoon, showers and thunderstorms overspreading all of southern Wisconsin. They continue through tomorrow night. And then on Saturday, that cold front sweeps through, taking the rain up to the northeast, but the strong winds could gust to 45 to 50 miles per hour. And then skies will clear out for Sunday, and temperatures will be pack up in the lower 60s. Rainfall amounts, a widespread area of about 2 to 3 inches of rain expected over much of southern Wisconsin, especially depending on where that front ends up. But notice the winds starting early Saturday morning. They pick up very quickly, and by early by 6 a.m., we could be seeing winds in the 40 to 50 mile per hour range that will continue through the afternoon and then start winding down again Saturday night. So our forecast for tomorrow calls for a high temperature of 64 degrees. It'll, that'll be early in the day, and then temperatures holding nearly steady. Showers and a few thunderstorms overspreading uh, much of southern Wisconsin. Notice 6.30 a.m. doesn't look like there's a lot out there. You can tell where the cold front is, and then that front becomes stationary, and the waves of showers and thunderstorms just keep moving along the front. Temperatures drop off a bit after uh, the showers and storms start, but then as we head into Friday night, notice how the showers and storms continue and then lift to the northeast. And by early Saturday morning, here's that cold front sweeping uh, northeastward, and then the air starts to clear out a little bit behind it. We could even see a little sunshine Saturday afternoon. But again, those rainfall amounts, two to three inches, maybe some locally three to five inch amounts over southwestern Wisconsin. And we could see those winds gusting to 45 to 50 miles per hour by midday Saturday. Seven to 10 day forecast. Temperatures still in the lower 60s Sunday and mid to upper 50s from Monday and Election Day Tuesday. Another chance of rain late in the day on Thursday as another cold front comes through. Temperatures even colder behind that by next weekend. Maybe some rain or snow shower chances as we head into Sunday afternoon. As we check out first warrant traffic right now. I'm not seeing too much of a problem on the Beltline. Uh, traffic moving pretty steadily in both directions. That's good news there. Travel times either way on the Beltline, about 15 to 18 minutes between University Avenue and the interstate. No problems heading out of Madison from the Beltline south through to Janesville on I-3990 or US-12 Middleton to Sauk City. Downtown to Sun Prairie is a 19-minute commute. That's your news for now, first warrant traffic. Okay, Gary, thank you. Next at five, you still have a chance to become America's next billionaire as the Powerball jackpot grows one once again, how much you could take home when we return. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. I see your hard work. Everything you do to try to make it. But people continue to be left behind. I'm running for Senate to put more money in your pocket. Ron Johnson's had 12 years to make things better. But costs are still rising. And all he's managed to do is write a tax cut for himself. I believe better is possible. I believe hard work can pay off. And I'll never stop fighting until it does. I'm Mandela Barnes and I approve this message. Dupixent helps you do more with less asthma and can help you breathe better in as little as two weeks. Dupixent is an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma that's not for sudden breathing problems. Dupixent can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. Get help right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about new or worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Ask your specialist about Dupixent. Everything seems to be getting more and more expensive these days. And it's the same for your heating bills. Since it will cost more to heat your home this winter, USA Insulation wants to give you control over your utility bills. Our premium injection foam keeps the cold outside and your warm, comfortable air inside right where it belongs. Call now before winter and get a $500 early bird discount. USA Insulation. Don't miss the 33rd Annual Winter Art Fair Off the Square, November 12th and 13th at the Monona Terrace Convention Center. Featuring over 100 Wisconsin exhibitors with a wonderful selection of ceramics, paintings, glass art, wood, jewelry, and much more. Place your bids at our silent auction Saturday only. Children will enjoy the Young Collector's Corner. Buy local for the holidays. The Winter Art Fair Off the Square. Put it on your calendar today. When cleaning your air ducts, it's important to clean the entire system. And air duct cleaning from Stanley Steamer removes pounds of trapped dirt, dust, and allergens from your home completely. The cleaning improves your home's indoor air quality, keeps your home cleaner longer, and can even improve the efficiency of your HVAC system. 
We want you to have the cleanest and healthiest indoor air possible. So call for a free inspection today. Stanley Steamer gets your home cleaner. As governor, I'll always try to do the right thing. I've worked with both parties to find middle ground to improve and invest in our public schools, cut income taxes, and put our state on solid financial footing. But here's what I won't do. I won't cut public school funding. I won't be Donald Trump's puppet. And I'll never allow radical politicians to make decisions about abortion. That should be left to women and their doctors. I'm Tony Evers, and I'm asking for your vote. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. The Powerball jackpot climbs again after no one won last night's drawing. The jackpot is now at $1.5 billion. The cash value of the prize will be roughly $745.9 million. The next drawing is Saturday, and it is the second largest jackpot in Powerball history. The biggest Powerball jackpot of all time was $1.586 billion. That was in January of 2016. Well, climate change is threatening the wine industry and researchers in Europe are on a mission to turn things around with the help of science. Rising temperatures mean grapes mature faster than ever before, leading to higher alcohol levels and also weaker colors and aromas. They're also using different ways to plant vines. There's one in Spain where they're using curvy rows instead of straight rows. That's to help water stay put when they don't get enough rainfall our vineyard Feyorigo that we have planted to fight against the problems of global warming. Well, there you see the curvy rose there. Now, scientists have created a vine and wine research institute to identify grape types most resistant to climate change. The goal is to help growers plant climate resi resilient vines that help climate proof wine for centuries to come. We'll have a final check of your first one forecast in just a moment. November starts now at Ashley. For a limited time, save 55% on Beautyrest Select Hybrid Mattresses and receive a comforter, two pillows, and a four-piece sheet set for free. And get 60 months special financing with no money down. Happening now, only at Ashley. DePaco Credit Union members are better together because together, members share thank yous at a DePaco-only perk that thanks members in cash. And because you're not just a member, you're also an owner, everyone benefits. How will this year's nearly $3.7 million in thank yous benefit you and your community? Since 2016, DePaco members have shared nearly $24.4 million. We truly are better together. Join the movement where your member ownership pays. Visit your nearest DePaco branch or join online at DePaco.com. Reclaim your garage with Edsel Shelving at Menards. These heavy-duty steel shelving units are designed to hold more and assemble easily in minutes. Perfect for your garage, basement, or workshop. All 11% off at Menards. Light up your garage, storage space, or workspace with a three-panel LED bulb from GT Light. This powerful 8,000 lumen bulb lasts 50 times longer and is 10 times brighter than a traditional incandescent bulb. Pick yours up today and save 11% at Menards. Save big money at Menards. As governor, I'll always try to do the right thing. I've worked with both parties to find middle ground to improve and invest in our public schools, cut income taxes, and put our state on solid financial footing. But here's what I won't do. I won't cut public school funding. I won't be Donald Trump's puppet. And I'll never allow radical politicians to make decisions about abortion. That should be left to women and their doctors. I'm Tony Evers, and I'm asking for your vote. There will always be bumps in the road. But we got guts, America. We got freedom. We got power. We got future. So let's drive on and make the future we want to see together. Because your new Ford vehicle is just the start of a journey. So stop by your Ford dealer today and claim one of the thousands of new Ford trucks and SUVs on their way. We've been building this country for 119 years, but we're just getting started. To everyone who craves a fresh meal, come have a taste of Wisconsin. America's Dairyland. As in real dairy. It gives Culver's fresh frozen custard its famous rich and creamy flavor. Like really rich. So rich. Rich and creamy. And our cook to order butter burgers. They're topped with, you guessed it, Wisconsin cheese. But it's the smiles we put on your face with every meal made just for you. It really makes our hearts melt. From Wisconsin with love. Welcome to delicious. Nice. 
Black November starts now at Ashley. For a limited time, take a bonus 20% off your purchase of $19.99 or more at checkout. Plus, get 60 months special financing, no minimum and no money down. Happening now only at Ashley. Coming up here on the CBS Evening News, federal health officials are warning of a shortage of amoxicillin. That's a crucial drug amid a surge of respiratory illness. How long could it last? That's all tonight here on the CBS Evening News. Temperatures are unseasonably mild, still 70 in Madison, 75 right now in Lone Rock across Dane County. Temperatures range from 69 in Perry to 70 in Sun Prairie and 70 in Deerfield. Look for temperatures to drop into the middle 60s by late evening, but again, alert days in the forecast for tomorrow and Saturday for rain and then wind. All right, Gary, thank you. The CBS Evening News is next. We're back in 30 minutes for News Now at 6.